honestly, um, I think one of the one of the great tips that I can extend out to anyone that would come on a cold day to Venice Beach, even though this is a really cool setting. Um, one of the things that we do is before we open a new store, is that we actually go through um, our Yelp list of people that actually really really like our brand. Um, and we, you're only allowed to communicate to a few each day. So we do this months out and we invite them to a Yelp party. Um, and that's one of the pre-opening parties that we have is an actual Yelp party. It's a, something that we came up with with the group. I highly recommend it. What ends up happening typically is, you know, can you get a bad review if you have an awful grand opening party? Absolutely. Uh, but more than likely, um, people, uh, it's an opportunity is, is owners and you know to be able to really actually talk to um, your, your Yelp guests and they then set up the page for you and get the first you know you know initial things going it's a great device and, and that's a huge deal we also do a separate Facebook party so we invite um, uh, a limited amount of people on Facebook we also do that with our constant contact list as well so all of our new store opening launches we have these individual parties for for you know our basically our Mendo regulars to invite. Them. So that's one follow. Up. How do you build your constant contact list of emails? Um, I, I, I wish you was savvy. We had people calling all the time for the soup and salad special. So I finally <laughs> said, "My God, let's just put it on our website." <laughs> this is ten years ago. Okay, and at that point, um, we're, uh, you know, we came across you know an ad for yeah, constant contact. I went to one of the seminars because I saw it as an emerging deal maybe eight years ago. And at that point, we allowed people, hey, instead of even going you know, online, let us just send at 10 o'clock, let you know when you're just starting to talk in the office what you know what we're going to have for lunch. Why don't we send you an email and let you know what's cooking at Menda that day. So it's on your website, it says like... It's on our website. Click the cow if you want to join the email blast and then you have an opportunity to opt in to a few different things. We're actually taking that to the next level as we're developing a Mendocino Farms app that might actually, um, you could opt in to get some push um, announcements that would work similar because it's more powerful. I think mobile is, the, is really the direction that, that we're all going. So. Failure. <laughs> Failure. There are so many. We should yeah, which one? <laughs> um, I will tell you, um, we actually, uh, Admittedly, and, and I'll, I'll do some shout outs to people that I think are fantastic. Um, you know, when it started, Kitchen, you know, has, uh, I, I've literally called him up and, and all the consulting I've given him for business of like, dude, you gotta talk to me about Twitter. Um, but uh, the biggest failure is that we actually um, had the gall to hire a third party that we actually made go through our training and we felt we'd culturalized them and then allow them to represent us online. And within one week, they made comments to a guest that was not what we consider Mendo. I know this is sounding like we're a cult, but <laughs> <laughs> was in our culture at all. Um, and at one point shut off someone from actually being able to say rude comments about us. And that's not really, you know what I mean, what we're about either. Um, it was just, how dare us, right? So we paid out the contract for the rest of the month and we got one week worth of work from someone that probably alienated guests um, more than in one week than we did in you know eight years prior. So, okay. yeah. What was that third party one? <laughs> 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 was it a company yeah, answering, okay. answering emails that were coming in to like the info site? Good dudes. <laughs> good dudes. <laughs> just didn't really get what we were doing. Yeah, yeah it, was just, it was a small, small company of yeah. guys. Okay. Probably, you know, three yeah. lofts down. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it was just, it was just a small Responding group. Yeah. There was one guy that we trained to respond to like oh, okay. everything from Facebook to, to um, shooting our tweets. And we were programming what we wanted to do, but it just wasn't owned by someone that owns it. And, mm -hmm. and he's got to make it work with five other brands. Right? I mean, I mean, we're not paying him enough. So those five other brands aren't, aren't what we think are similar. I mean, maybe if he was doing it for, you know, Tender Greens and, and Mendo, and for that matter, Fresh Brother, you know, like, that might be cool, but it, it, was, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I used to also, so I do in-house PR at Tender Greens, but I also used to work for Tender Greens. And I used to work for Tender Greens, but I also used to manage social media for clients. And so it is hard, and that is one of the big points as a restaurant owner. You know, the most powerful is that it comes from you. You're the one and you're the voice, but you have a million things to do. So 
how do you possibly manage that? I've been doing Tender Grace's Twitter for five years or so. Like I started them up when Twitter was a big thing. I was like just starting, and I think the hardest part of that is that you have to find somebody who understands the voice of the brand. And I think that's what I was saying is that that person didn't understand who they were, and that's really hard to capture. Like I feel like still now, like I still sometimes think I'm like, okay, what is the voice of Tender Grace? And I sit and I'm like, okay, what would Eric say? How would he respond to this person? Um, you have to think about that. What is the voice of your social media and your marketing? And it's quirky and it's different. Eric has a very specific voice, and I, I think about what he would say. And when you hire somebody to do it, you have to make sure that they get it, they get who your brand is. You know, when you put in your training, it doesn't always do. You know, sometimes an in-house person is great, sometimes it's you, and some, there's some agencies that do a great job. It just sort of depends. But um, I think, I guess I'll go on to the questions, but one of my big social media failures, I'll start with failure first and then the success story. Um, was you know, one of our biggest challenges at Tender Grains is how do we convey that we're not just a salad place? We're not vegetarian, we're not vegan, you know, we have meat dishes, we believe in meat, we support ranchers, um, we, the restaurants do whole animals, nose to tail. And so we thought, like, hey, this will be a great idea. We'll do some nose to tail stuff, whole animal butchery, and we'll share about it. And then we posted some photos of some whole animal butchering, and then people freaked out because that's not who our audience is. Some <laughs> yogis. Um, but it's a good learning lesson. You know, we might have alienated some people. Okay, well, we'll just, that's a good lesson learned. Uh, you know, and we, you know, Lindy Grundy has butchering photos all the time. Why is it a big deal? Well, we're not Lindy Grundy, we're not. And we do have expert butchers who are in the butcher's field, but, you know, knowing what to post. And one of our challenges, too, is we allow our chefs and our restaurants to share photos of what's happening. It's more authentic. It's coming from them. As much as I'm posting or Eric's posting, we're not there in the restaurant. They can capture moments. And we had a girl who posted a photo, picked up the cleaver through it, and oops. oops. Uh, so that was a big mistake, but it was a good learning lesson for her and taking it all down. Um, so, FYI, know your audience before you post photos. Biggest success. <laughs> Biggest success, I think. Um, we, so the difference for us, we also do daily specials. We have twice changing daily specials at every single restaurant. Every restaurant has a different daily special by a different chef. So you can see it gets really complicated. We have 12 stores, two daily specials per day. So that's a lot of weeks. Um, and then it's not just one, there's multiple. There's different things. If you ever been to a tender green, we have different harvest salads and seasonal soups. So what we've done is we put all of our daily specials on Twitter. And we have one Twitter account for the brand that's it, you know, separated by location. We thought about doing that, it was really tempting. But ultimately, you still have to have somebody sign into every single one and update it, and then you lose an audience. So we have about an audience of 10,000 followers on Twitter, and we have each of the locations tweet their daily special with a location-specific hashtag. And then that hashtag gets pulled to our website. So if you ever go on our website and you look at the menu for the location, you see it pull in. So it's really cool. We get a lot of people who go in and they order the daily specials. And just that's something that's simple. Like, when a location does the post a daily special, I hear about it. I see somebody tweeting off and going, where is it? What's the daily special for this today? So I think that's a great success story. Somebody's paying enough attention that they're, they want to know what it is. And I also got a phone call. They said, hey, I think somebody hacked into your, tw into your Twitter because somebody else is using the same hashtag. Um, so the fact that people can go in and choose to find and see daily specials, and then each of those locations have the power to share photos. So that's really powerful, but then again, the challenge with that is how do you control every single person? Who's, like that's a lot of people who could potentially post damaging information. So um, we manage that. We kind of explain. We train them. Tell them what's okay to post. We give them some guidelines. Um, but as a result, we get really beautiful photos of our daily specials, and people share them. And I see people will see the photos. And like, wow, that looks amazing. I need to come and get that right now. Like how long do you have this? Like, how long do you have this daily special for? Or Someone will see it at a different location and then they'll go down there and try it. So I think that's been our biggest success using Twitter for our specials and integrating it into the website. Fresh Brothers' biggest, probably greatest success is that we stay away from discounting at the pizzeria. And a uh, real important for us that we don't coupon uh, and send out how you see the big three pizza uh, Domino's, Little Caesars. That it's all about the price. And we stay away from that from day one. Uh, we do have a, uh, what we call our fresh fan club. Uh, we use constant contact. Uh, we have quite a few members on that, almost 50,000 now in five years. I'm sorry. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here more as a certain 
the person taking notes that won't share. <laughs> but we, we, it, it, the good thing for us is that because our business is so much pickup and delivery and as to pizza place, and those of you I know there's a lot of pizzerias out here, uh, we get so much information from our customers. What was the last time you would just go tell somebody where you live, what your phone number is, what your email address is? We get all that, and I have high school students ask me for that. And people just turn it over. We, you know, we have attorneys and accounts that are giving all this information away to us because they just want the pizza delivered. Uh, so it's a great source, and that's another thing if you're looking into online ordering. If you just think of the databases. We have a list, I have, I have a list that I don't even have to do with right now uh, that we're, you know, I have a list of the mistakes we've made all year. We're going to, at the end for the holiday, we're going to send every one of those people a holiday card. Uh, not, re not talking about the mistake I made, but just out of the blue, there's probably 10,000 people that are going to card from us via email that says, hey, happy holidays, you know, and, and I'm using that list just to remind them, you know, that hey, we're here. Uh, and then we'll mess with all the catering for the holidays. You know, <laughs> 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 So that, that, that's probably, I think, that, you know, the other part of our, I think one of our best successes is that everything that we do on email marketing or internet marketing uh, or marketing in general is built around a campaign. Um, there's reason for it. So uh, we just lost, uh, so we just launched about a month ago a new meet, our new meatball sliders. The, the online or email blast will be about the sliders. <coughs> when you walk into our store, there's a sign by the, the door, a 22 by 28 sign. As there, as you walk in, promoting the meatball slider, you walk up to the register. There's another bit of the slider. When you sit down the table, we use napkin holders that have inserts so they'll do it. There's more about the meatball slider. So we're just, you know, it's constant. The message is all tied together. Uh, so it keeps a continuity and consistency throughout uh, all different medias uh, to promote that new product. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. That was a great point. Big Not failure. Big failure. <laughs> Big. This is a god like failure. 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 Turn them into the Olympic rings, <laughs> and it went really well until we put an email blast out that said, "You know, watch the hockey team go for the gold." Well, go for the gold is picked up by the International Olympic Committee really fast, and we got a call and cease and desist <laughs> because we, we did so well with five billboards in LA for three weeks that I had no problem with, and then we put gold for the gold. So that was that was. It didn't cost us much, but we had to remove everything real quick. Uh, the other, and, and one more success for us, honestly, is that my, my wife runs our social media. We were talking about it, what Mario said. Uh, you know, I, I, I can see some people work with family in here. There's some good people next to you. But uh, that, and it's certainly very challenging, but that voice is just key. And uh, if, it, if, we, if my wife's position, who is my co-founder, and as we put this together uh, with me as my partner, uh, if there's one job that I will not let her quit, it's dealing with social media, being our voice on Yelp, <laughs> you know, and answering and responding. That, that, that's my full-time person who is constantly responding because she is the voice. She knows the voice of the family. Uh, we're fresh brothers. She's fresh mom. Uh, so, you know, but, but she knows the voice that's supposed to come from us when we respond. And we've now actually, there's, there's not enough time of the day for her to keep doing this. We have a, one of our general managers who's moved down, who's done the operations, uh, and brought him in house. Uh, he's now allowed to respond back. So, not only just reviews and that sort of thing, they're dealing with, uh, you know, someone had a problem ordering online last night, and either they told us about it on Yelp. Uh, if they really want to make a statement, then you know then we work on seeing if we give them a better experience, if we change that uh, to you know uh, sending us a direct email on our contact page. Uh, but we respond to the, we respond to everybody within 24 hours or faster, uh, and that and that's really what people want. You know, so there's so much damage control that we do right now on a daily basis, uh, and you have to uh, you know if you think you can just let it go. You know, that, that sets us go. It just spirals out of control if you don't respond to people. And generally, we can calm most situations down just by responding and letting them know that we really do care. 
And that voice <coughs> uh, is key. So in your own businesses, find that voice, whether it's yours uh, as the owner or CEO or the founder of your company. Let somebody else operate the business. Let somebody else make the pieces. You, know, you can't replace that voice. I want to talk about numbers and data and how you inform your online 